Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim, fill that out and that's it. I always like to start with something interesting and you know, hackers, they love to hack. And there are so many of them who are just ticked off that Elon Musk is running Twitter. And get this, there's a file containing the email addresses for over 200 million, yes, I said 200 million Twitter users. It has been published in a popular hacker forum. So you have 200 million Twitter users' email addresses. So how much do you think that file is going to go for? How much do you think? A million dollars? Two million dollars? Five hundred thousand dollars? I mean, think about it. You could spam all those addresses and pitch them a phishing email saying that their Twitter account is in jeopardy, change their password. And if you get like 1% of these people to fall for it, you would have like 2 million accounts. So how much? 200 million Twitter users, email addresses, how much do you think it's going to cost? Ready for it? $2. Ah, wow, that hurts. Just $2. And on that happy note, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages to this. It's called Kim Commando Today because my successful weekend radio show that you can hear on over 425 top stations throughout the United States and also globally on the American Forces Radio Network. Well, we've expanded to Monday through Friday. Just a quick reminder, you can get Kim Commando Today as a podcast Monday through Friday. Wherever you get your podcast, just search for Commando with the K, of course. And I'm sure you have at least a few questions about something digital I can lend a hand to. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 And if you're a new listener, hey, welcome. We're so glad to have you with us. And if you are already a listener, welcome back. And all righty then, every single day I scour the news wires, I visit over 30 different websites, and I speak to my friends, the industry insiders, to make sure that you're up to date on all things digital. And this is part of the show where I like to focus on tech news, and the new year can't get off on the right foot without everybody's predictions, so let's go for it. We can start by looking for Netflix to be acquired, most likely by Paramount Global, They own, of course, a lot of things. CBS, Paramount Studios, Showtime, BET, the CW Network, MTV, along with a whole bunch of local TV stations. Or maybe Paramount Global could be sold off. So who could buy it? Maybe Comcast, the owners of NBC Universal, CNBC, MSNBC, and Xfinity Cable, plus a whole bunch of local TV stations. Now, here's a shocker. Disney and Apple. No one's sure who will buy who, But the two companies are rubbing shoulders. And another big shocker, look for YouTube to buy the rights to NFL Sunday Ticket. And sometime soon, Apple's going to ban the communist Chinese-backed TikTok from the Apple Store. But there's more. This new year will bring artificial intelligence pushing even deeper into all of our lives. Now, it's not something you're exactly going to see directly, but AI will control more of how we search the Internet what stores sell, how doctors diagnose, even hometown physicians. And Tesla's troubles, they will continue to grow in the new year. The federal investigation into its autopilot system is going to lead to some big, heavy fines. Now, there's even an outside chance of an indictment or two, not to mention lawsuits from everybody who has been injured. But the biggest unknown is the Supreme Court. Yeah. Should the court strike down a law called Section 230, of the 1996 Communications Decency Act. Well, and it should, because if that happens, this has big repercussions, folks. Talking about Facebook, Twitter, and all of social media will be held directly responsible, just like newspapers and broadcasters, for everything that allows to be posted on its forums and on sites. But there's also something else that happened. Well, this actually happened on January 1st. The state of Louisiana launched a new battle against an old problem, To view internet pornography in Louisiana, wow, you have to prove your age. Now, most people are unaware that a lot of states, porn is illegal, right? But Louisiana's new law says that any company running a website that intentionally distributes material harmful to minors, that is, here's the number, if the website material is more than 33 and a third percent harmful, in this case, porn, It has to confirm the age of every single viewer. So how are they going to do this? A driver's license works. So far, the only porn site complying is called Pornhub. It's one out of millions. But what exactly is pornographic? 
That's the big question. U.S. Congressman Mike Lee from Utah introduced a bill called the Interstate Obscenity Definition Act to define what exactly is porn. Now, the last time this battle was fought was during the Reagan years, and this is definitely going to be one to watch, no pun intended. All right, moving on to Google. Have you ever seen the handwriting of a medical doctor that was, well, something you could actually read? It was decipherable? Well, hats off to all the pharmacists over the years who were able to decode prescriptions every single day. But there's another set of prying eyes that are looking, or soon will be, as even more of our private lives evaporate. Now then, who would you guess those prying eyes belong to? I gave you a hint. I said it was Google, right? Here's Google's official statement. A Google AI system, well, quoting now, act as of assistive technology for digitizing the handwritten medical documents by augmenting humans in the loop, such as pharmacists. Okay. Yes, that's what they said. Augmenting humans in the loop. You know, it's been pretty well past the last hundred years or so that you, your doctor, and your pharmacist weren't just part of this loop. They were actually the loop. And you can bet your bippy that Google's going to be tracking all this data about all your prescriptions and then tying it to all the data that they collect and sell to who knows who. And finally, this, the latest from Mark Zuckerberg's Metaverse. We need some like, big sound effect for this. Womp womp. Yeah, it's dismal. It's been over a year since Facebook became Meta, and then the Meta stock began plunging. It's down more than a trillion dollars since last September as the company just burns through billions and billions of dollars to invent what they're calling Horizon Worlds. That's the so-called metaverse. And today, Zuckerberg's metaverse is nowhere. Now, the sales of VR headsets necessary for entering any virtual world have fallen by 10%. Now, I'm not saying there's never going to be a VR world. And I've heard from people saying, well, you know, Kim, you're, you know, VR is going to be something big when surgeons can do, they can see what they're going on. Don't confuse VR with augmented reality. I mean, I saw Ready Player One just like everybody else. But what I am saying is that Zuckerberg won't be the dominant VR player. Why? Yes, it starts with an A. I'm not talking about Amazon. I'm talking about Apple. Apple's working on its own VR headset for 2023, along with its own virtual world. Jeez. I mean, every time you turn around, there's some new change in technology. Like, for example, I never thought I'd see the day where tech would be so advanced that you can watch a movie at home with the same experience as in the movie theaters. But here, VR, yes. Hey, stay right where you are because coming up, oh, I've got so much to tell you about. I'm talking about how you can organize your phone for the new year, how to make sure those streaming devices aren't tracking you. Oh, and by the way, hackers are after Google accounts. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to secure yours. And of course, we have all of your great phone calls here on Kim Commando today. Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And if you're just too shy to come on a big-time national radio show and podcast, I'd love to hear from you. Just head over to the website, commando.com, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says Email Kim. All right, how about we start with Nicole? Hello there, Nicole. Hi, how are you? I'm good. What's going on? Well, I have a question, and I knew that I could trust you. Um, I've been looking on the Internet and haven't been able to find anything, and I always know I find relevant information when I look at your website or hear you on the radio, so I'm calling to ask you a question. You got me. Thank you for all those kind words, by the way. Yeah. Um, Okay, so my question is I have a couple teenagers that I'm ready to get them. Well, they're ready (laughs) for (laughs) phone service. And I was looking at Pure Talk or um, Patriot Mobile because I've heard them endorsed by radio hosts that I like. And my question is, is it safe to unlock network, unlock my iPhones? Because I've heard, but nobody can really tell me that it, it weakens security somehow on your phone to unlock it from your current provider. Okay. So you want to unlock your iPhones? Well, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm curious because in order to do Patriot Mobile or Pure Talk, because they're less expensive that I've found, mm-hmm. um, you have to have it unlocked. Um, either that or do you have a better solution? Maybe you know something I don't. Well, you know, I'm always worried of anybody unlocking an iPhone. 
Uh, you know, I mean, you can jailbreak the phone, and I'm sure there are people going, I did it, it's fine, everything's great. But sure. how old are the kids? Uh, 16, 15. All right. I have one turning 13 soon. Oh, wow, you're busy. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry. In about seven years, they're going to look at you and go, my mother is the smartest woman ever. I mean, you know, right now, oh, right now you're not. But you will be. No. I promise. I'm counting on that. I'm still counting on that. <laughs> okay. And, you know, and, and they think they're really smart, too, you know, but they're not. Yep. But they'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. right. So you have so you 16 and a 13-year-old. Um, yeah. I would not give them an unlocked iPhone. And okay. the reason why is that because the phone is unlocked, they can download anything under the sun. And... Right now, we already have, you already have stuff. So, I mean, you're, you're going to go through the rules of the road and everything with the phone. And so you'll be able to pick up the phone, right? right. And, and right now, you could pick up the phone and you're thinking to yourself, oh, look, little Johnny, he's really getting into math. He downloaded a new calculator. And then unbeknownst to you is that he can punch in a few numbers and then his porn stash is hidden behind the calculator. Hmm. Yeah, so, I've heard of that. I didn't realize unlocking the phone gave it. No, took you, away you, my parental controls. Well, no, you can. They can do that now on an iPhone, but it's even worse oh, when it's yeah. unlocked, because oh, okay. because apps have to be vetted by the Apple Store mm -hmm. in order to get put into the store. And so right. what they do is with the calculator apps or whatever, they just say like, you know, if you want a secure place to to hide your files. Okay, but oh. but if do you have an iPhone? I do. Okay. Okay, because you have an iPhone, you know how it works, all right? Mm -hmm. And then you know that you can look on their account and you can see everything that they've downloaded. You can right. look at every app that they've purchased. Mm -hmm. You can restrict where they go, what they do. Um, right. Not to say that they can't get around it, but you have some sure. control there. If you unlock it, everything, any, anything like that is gone. Oh, okay. okay. So, okay. so your Apple parental controls and your restrictions are now gone. Okay. Okay. Can you put something else on? Yes, but because it's unlocked, now we're also opening ourselves up for malware, badware. It's just, it's just not a great idea. Okay. Okay. Unless you're gonna, unless you're really a tech head, and you're gonna be on this, which is why I listen to you. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So you know. So I'm just, let's just make life easy. Life is hard enough. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. So now it comes down to which provider do I need? Which provider do I want? Okay. Right. So now we're going to look at family plans because okay. you have you and now you've got two other phones on here and mm -hmm. there are ways that you can share the data. Uh, also under a family plan, you can even have, you may be able to, you'll also have other restrictions so if in fact they act up and you want to take the phone away, it's a lot easier for you to do that under a family plan because you can just check a okay. few boxes and you're going to do all this online. You can go online to pay their bills. You can see how much data that they're using, if they're getting out of control. Uh, it, it, just, it just makes it easier for you as a mom to control this. So you have to look at your major carriers. Uh, you know, of course, there's, you know, T-Mobile, they're a sponsor of our show. So I got to tell you, they have unlimited data, 50 gigs a month, and it's like $60 a month for a phone. Okay. So you might want to look at that. Um, Mint is also another viable. And then there's also Visible, which is from Verizon. So look at look at the carrier that you have now and see what type of deal that they'll offer you. And you might be able to even get it even lower if you start saying, you know, I need to keep this. You know, you also want to keep them at a baseline of how much data that they're going to be using. So this way they don't go right. crazy because, you know, you're going to give them a phone. They're going to go nuts with it. You know that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And so uh, so just, you know, keep tabs on it. What I used to do is just pick up the phone every once in a while and scan through it. And have you had like the sex talk and phones with them yet? Yes. All right. Good. Okay. Because that's a big problem. Um, and if you, yeah, they actually already have some of our old iPhones, but they can iMessage their friends who have other iPhones, so they already have a little bit of communication oh, okay, and, and the, and the access right. to the you know the computer with the phone app on it. All right. Good. Because um, I was just concerned. 
what concerned me is I'm sure you know, because I mean, you had friends of yours, like where the parents kept them like hidden their whole time. And then when they get to college, yeah. they're like crazy drinking, binging kids <laughs> at frat parties. Right, right. Because okay. it's not if it's when. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, yeah. you know, so that's what's happening. You know, a lot of parents were like, oh, no, we're not going to give get the kids phones. I mean, I had dinner with a friend of mine who has an 11 year old and he's like, she wants a phone. I'm like, then you better give her one. I mean, yeah. Uh, the the longer that you wait, the more the more it, it's she's going to want to jump to it and go crazy with it. So we want to keep, teach our kids to be responsible digital adults. So that's why we need to get them involved maybe a little bit earlier than we all want. Uh, thank you so much for your call, Nicole. If you have any other questions, just give me a call back. I'm here for you. Now, anytime we talk about kids and technology, it's always important to have open and honest conversations with them. I mean, one of the most important things that you can do as a parent is to monitor your child's phone usage and talk to them about their online activities. Find out what they're doing, what they've seen, and encourage them to come to you with anything that they see online that makes them feel, and I always use the word uncomfortable because it covers the gamut, and just make sure that they know that they can always have these frank, honest conversations with you about their online experiences, whether it's good or whether it's bad. All right, it is the new year, so let's talk about your smartphone. Have you really looked at your smartphone lately? Hmm. Okay, let me give you a hint. It's a total mess. That's right. You have apps all over the place and so many apps that you just never use. You have 10 photos of one meal for every meal that you've liked in the past year. You have those voicemails that you've listened to, but you're just hanging on to them for some unknown reason. Well, here are some quick tips to get your smartphone back into shape. And let's start with those apps. It's a storage drain. Now, if you have an iPhone, check your app usage in your screen time settings. And from there, you're going to see a snapshot of which apps you spend the most time on. Now, do the same thing if you're listening, you have an Android device. Just head into settings, tap on the digital well-being, and then the parental controls button. And then delete all those apps you're no longer using. Candy Crush, we are talking about you. That's right. Also, Angry Birds. Next, do a deep clean on those voicemails. They can take up a lot of storage space. Now, if you don't want to delete voicemails from loved ones, I totally get that. What you want to do is save them to your Google Drive or another client account for safekeeping. And if you're not quite sure how to do that, um, just head over to the website, commando.com. And when you're there in the search box, just type in, Uh, saving voicemails, and I'm sure we have a whole bunch of tips to pop up. And speaking of commando.com, you could win a $500 gift card. That's right. What could you do with $500 if I handed to you this very moment? Well, enter to win at commando.com slash win. That's commando.com slash win. And here's a hint. You can get additional entries by doing other things like subscribing to this podcast or another podcast or getting a newsletter or maybe following us on Twitter. And again, that address to enter to win a $500 gift card is commando.com slash win. Coming up, we have more of your phone calls as well as what to do in the cold weather in your devices. Okay, word is out that hackers are after Google accounts. And so in just a few moments, we're going to talk about how you can secure your Google account and see if anybody has hacked into it already. And then later on, you know, your streaming devices, mm, they're tracking you like everybody else. I'm going to tell you what to check for and how to make that stop too. But before we get to all that, let's talk about the ice and snow. Let me tell you, you can do a number on your gadgets, especially your smartphone. So can you guess what temperature negatively impacts all smartphones? What's that temperature? Well, let me give you a hint. When water freezes or at, yes, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So here are some insider tips to protect those devices from cold weather damage, because after all, they cost a bundle. Number one, before leaving home, charge your device to the max. And here's the reason why. Phones are powered by lithium ion batteries that lose charge fast in the cold. At negative 35 degrees, I couldn't even imagine being there. Let me tell you. Um, Anyway, your phone battery will die in about five minutes. All right, next up, if you need to be out in the cold weather, just put a case on your phone. Get an insulated case that's specifically designed to keep your phone at a warmer temperature. Now, most phones operate best at, can you guess, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And finally, don't leave your phone in a cold car, patio, or worse, or in the snow. And if your phone's battery suddenly dies in the cold, uh, put it inside and with time, it will start again. But whatever you do, 
please, 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 please do not blow dry your smartphone or do not microwave it. I know you're smarter than that, but I just had to remind everybody else, you know, those other people. Uh, Roberta in Fayette, Maine. Hello there, Roberta. Hi, thank you for taking my call. You betcha. What's going on? Well, uh, first of all, I want to say my husband and I really enjoyed listening to your program and uh, being able to go on your website and look up stuff because we're basically clueless when it comes to technology. Uh, and I, I had somebody call me just last week with one of these things saying, you know, I, you know, you're, you're being uh, sued in a lawsuit. And I was just like, yeah, right. Kim warned me about you. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> yes. Good. That's great. Uh, anyway, what's going on is that uh, I'm the founder of an organization that helps people in Maine on abandoned and discontinued roads, which cause a lot of problems here in Maine. And so I've been researching these roads for close to 40 years, and I have wow. just a ton of information that I need to back up so I don't lose it if my computer crashes. And uh, so when Microsoft offered me free cloud storage, I thought, oh, good, this will be great. It'll back up my stuff. I didn't realize it was going to back up everything, whether I wanted it or not. And what I really want is something that I can I have it automatically back up anything I flag as a road file because, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get into the habit of backing stuff up regularly, and I'm constantly updating the information. So it needs to be an automatic backup for that, but not back up anything else unless I tell it to. And I don't know if there's even a product that does that, but I figured you would know. Well, first of all, before I answer your cloud storage question, I am fascinated about what you're doing. So. You're finding, like, abandoned roads? Yeah. Uh, under main law, when a road is discontinued, it, there, there are four different ways that it can happen. There, there was the old discontinuance law, which when a road was discontinued, it wasn't a road anymore, and it could leave people landlocked. And oh, the wow. new discontinuance law after 1965, which automatically retains what's called a public easement. And a public easement means the public no longer has to maintain it, but the public can still use it, which means that the people who depend on it for access end up maintaining a public road at their own expense or they lose access. And then there's abandonment, where uh, under the old system, if a road was not used for 20 years, it ceased to be a road. And under the new system, after 1976, I, when a road is abandoned, it automatically becomes a public easement. And it can be abandoned if a town has not done maintenance on it for 30 years. Wow. So Boy. it's it's complicated. It is. It's I, very I complicated. Guess. It is. Yeah. So I get contacts from people saying, we're on this road and nobody can tell us what it is. What are our rights? Who can use it? Can we stop people from using it? Who has to maintain it? And then, Roberta, you come into the rescue. Dun, da, da, da. Yeah. Yep. R- Roberta, the road queen, we're going to call you. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I could accept that title. <laughs> or the road goddess. You can, I'll be the digital goddess. You get to be uh, the road goddess. Okay. Well, we've been called road warriors. <laughs> that too. That too. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk about your backup. Now, normally when you sign up for any type of backup is that you are allowed to select which files and folders that you want. Now, if you select the C off the C drive, it's going to it's gonna back up everything. So mm. what you can do is you can go in there and say, I only want to back up these particular folders, okay? And yeah. anything that goes in this folder, this is what I would like to back up. Now, I don't know how much Microsoft is charging these days, but... You know, I've been talking about this company called iDrive for like, I don't know, eons. I don't know, 50 years. Well, maybe not that long. But, you know, but iDrive.com. So if you go to iDrive.com, is that what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the stuff that you want to back up and we're going to put it up in the cloud. Okay. And then once it's up in the cloud, what's nice about iDrive is that they also do, they take snapshots every every once in a while. They do uh, what's called versioning. And so you have up to 30 previous versions of all the files that you've backed up. So if you remove something, you go, oh, gosh, I deleted that file. Well, you can go back to iDrive and go, oh, here, I got that back. OK. Mm-hmm. And so so it has all these neat little features. And then in addition to that, if you're traveling or if you're about and you're like, oh, you know, that file was on my home computer, but I wish I could see it here off my tablet. You can. You fire up the iDrive app, and then you can see that file from wherever the road may lead. So you're not stuck just having the files on your home computer. You can manage it. It's fast. It's secure. 
uh, all that other good stuff. It, it can do the complete backup. It can clone, but it sounds like you don't want to do that. You just want certain files to be backed up. Now, you get five terabytes uh, of iDrive for $7 Wow! for the first year. I mean, it's like, that's, you know, I talk about it. I'm like, you know, how can you not have a backup? <laughs> you know I mean, really, mm. I mean, seven bucks for the first year for five terabytes. Now, you got to use promo code Kim because they are an advertiser. i got to tell you all that. Um, but and if you want to stick with Microsoft, you can. But I just want you to know that you have options. But in that Microsoft configuration somewhere, you're going to be able to uh, to say these are only the files and folders that I want to back up. But if you're looking for a complete backup solution, uh, it's the one that I use. I recommend. I've been recommending for many years. And we've got so many people that are happy using it. Revota, do you want to try out iDrive then? Yeah, I'd like to try it because I'm really not pleased with the the uh, Microsoft. They, they told me, you know, this is free backup, but then they filled it, and so now I have to buy more storage, which I don't really want to do with a service I don't really like. Yeah, well, you know what? Try uh, try iDrive. Make sure that you use promo code Kim because then you get that special okay. deal, the six ninety five for the uh, the first year. And again, that's iDrive dot com. When you sign up, just use promo code Kim. Uh, Roberta, thank you so much for your kind words. And keep going, girl. I think that's great what you're doing. I bet you're helping so many people who probably just like, I don't know where to turn. And now, Roberta, because you're on the show, I bet you get even more requests. And so hopefully you, you'll you pass along your web address to us so in case anybody does contact us that we know where to send them to you. Now, there's no one-size-fits-all answer to the question of how often you should back up your stuff. So the frequency of the backups depends on the amount of data you have and how quickly it's changing and how critical it is to your business or personal life. But if you have a lot of data that changes frequently, consider backing up your computer every day or even multiple times per day. But if you have less critical data that doesn't change as often, maybe back it up once a week or once a month. If you have a small amount of data that doesn't change very often, maybe you can just back up once every few months. But it's important to find a backup schedule that works for you. And also, multiple copies of those backups, I can't stress it enough, different locations in case one copy becomes lost or damaged. All right, hackers are wanting Google accounts. And so I want you to be sure that your Google account is secure. And I want you to do this check right now. Because this Google tracking, of course, we all know it's for the benefit and they pay big money to target with ads based on your data. Alphabet, Google's parent company, here's a little fun fact for you. They make $420,000 every minute. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? Almost half a million dollars every minute. But luckily, some of this tracking can actually help you. This is works great for spotting snoops that you may know. Maybe a friend or a family member is poking around your Google or your Gmail account. So here's the way to find out. You go to google.com slash devices. Once again, google.com slash devices. And here you're going to see a list of devices. And these are your computers, your smartphones, your tablets, your laptops that you're currently signed into or have been signed into within the last 28 days. Now, you will see the same device multiple times because each session, like, for example, when you logged in, it's recorded. That's absolutely nothing to worry about. But along with your current sessions, you may see devices that have been inactive for a long time, like an old phone or computer that you don't use anymore. You can sign out of these devices. Just click the one that you want, then sign out. But you can also find connected devices like Android phones. Now, what happens if you see a computer, phone, tablet, whatever that you don't recognize? Click the device and choose don't recognize something, or sign out. Okay, this is going to sign the device out remotely. Now, if this happens, oh my gosh, take the next step. Please make sure that you change your password and be sure to set up two-factor authentication. And if you need more information about that, or you missed it and you're like, oh, where was I supposed to go again? And what do I click? Just head over to the official homepage of Kim Commando today. That is, of course, commando.com with a K, K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. And in the box, just search for something like hackers and Google accounts. All right, still to come, we have more of your fantastic phone calls you don't want to miss, as well as a wonderful tip at the very end of this show about stopping streaming devices from tracking you. And of course, you have more of me, America's Digital Pro, Kim Commando. All righty then, back to the phones we go with Aaron. Hello there, Aaron. Well, I'm uh, trying to find an app for my phone where I can find like a pen pal. Someone where I can text them or even voice chat them, talk about my day at work, 
vent about my boss or when my kids aren't eating their broccoli, something like that. But what I'm not looking for is something that's a lead to relationship or a dating website. And it seems like that's all I'm able to find. And so is this for something to help you relax or why? Exactly. I'm an insomniac. I'm up much later than all my friends and family. And I don't know. I just want it as a, kind of like a hobby, someone to talk to. Okay. Well, um, you know, there's a – have you ever tried Twitch? No. Um, Twitch might be interesting for you. Uh, what it does is it shows you streams that are uh, – streams of people doing things – anything under the sun. I'm not talking about sexual. I'm talking about maybe they're playing video games or maybe they're showing you how to do something. Maybe there's a uh, music broadcast. There's all kinds of content creators and there's in real life streams. And it really has become a community of each stream of like-minded people where they join at specific times and they get to know each other in these chat scenarios. Uh, and there are some pay things. You don't have to pay the content creators, but it really becomes a a community around something that you like to do, and they're doing it 24-7. So, you know, whether you're up at 2 o'clock in the morning or 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, that might be something that you might want to, uh, well, you might want to, to check out, again, because it does let you kind of interact with other people from around the world. Uh, there are also these other apps that will allow you to meet people. I, you know, I, I don't want to talk about those unless I have a chance to actually evaluate them. And I want to make sure that there aren't some bad things going on in these particular apps that are geared towards, as you mentioned, pen pals. So until I have a chance to put that list together, why don't you try out Twitch? Uh, another site that you might want to check out is discord.com. And that's also Discord chat. So check out Twitch and check out Discord. And then in the interim, let me put together a list of some of these PayPal type of a pen pal type, not PayPal. Let me put together a list of these pen pal type of sites so that this way you can check them out as we can check out and everybody else who can check them out. So if you don't already get our tips of the day, make sure that you do that and just sign up at commando.com slash subscribe because we'll push that tip out, say, within the next couple of weeks of some legitimate ways and places where if you want to get a pen pal that you can do that. I'm just always afraid of scammers, of course, whenever we put two people together. That's why I want to make sure that we can check these out and actually vent them for you before we put out that list. And Aaron, uh, check out Twitch and Discord, and thank you for your kind words about the show. I appreciate it. You know, this brings up an important point that so many people are lonely. It was exasperated by COVID and all of our digitized lifestyles. And then there's a decline of organized religions, left this void of gathering places. So there are apps for friendships like Bumble, BFF, Hey Vino, Yubo, and Meetup, uh, in-person gatherings, Ground for and Chief. But just keep in mind that some online gaming communities, online forums, Discord servers, those are good. And language exchange apps. Yeah, you can practice a foreign language with a native speaker and then maybe make a friendship along the way. Tandem and Hello Talk are really good for that. But it's really important to be cautious when chatting with people online. And remember, not everyone is who they say that they are. So always, always be sure to protect your personal information and be careful. I'm actually, I'm actually just drop them like a hot potato. Anybody who asks you for money or some really personal details. Have you ever wondered how the advertisements that you see when you're watching a streaming show, they just seem to know a lot about you, right? The political party that you support, the sneakers that you wear, the food that you feed your dog. The answer, yeah, you're being tracked. So there are some streaming device settings that you want to turn off to protect your privacy. Now, Amazon Fire TV Stick, Roku, Apple TV, they're all great options when you've cut the cable. They're cheap. The trade-off, the streaming companies track what you watch for how long and also what you look up. And then they sell your data to who knows who. So here's what you can do. Nosy around in your device's privacy settings. The option that lets the streaming company track you is often called app usage data, or maybe it's called limit ad tracking or simply tracking data. Other times, these companies like to come up with clever names like interactive advertising. Hmm, sounds like something I would want. No, they're tracking you. It's not just streaming services either. 
I don't know if you know this, but Vizio TVs, they make more money selling viewers' data than they actually do selling their own televisions. Isn't that something? Hey, thanks for listening to Kim Commando today. So reach over and give me a nice five-star review. Yes, thank you. And thanks for listening. <laughs>